in another effort to forge a hostage release and truce in the seven-month war. Delegations from Hamas and Israel are back at the negotiation table in Cairo. Right, Shivan, Israel's close ally, Washington, D.C., which is also involved in the negotiations along with Qatar and Egypt, say it is hopeful that the two sides can close the remaining gaps. Although Hamas officials have warned Israel that the talks in Cairo will be their last chance to free the estimated 128 hostages still held in Gaza. In addition to that, Hamas officials Osama Hamdan has also warned that if Israel's military aggression continues in Rafah, there will be no ceasefire deal. If the aggression continues, there will be no ceasefire because Israelis are the ones attacking and shooting. It is normal for resistance to respond to this aggression to respond in defense and to respond in order to defeat the occupation. Well, the latest attempt to achieve a truce in the ongoing war comes at a time when Israel sent tanks into Rafah in southern Gaza, seizing the border crossing with Egypt. In an operation, the United Nations said denied its access to the key humanitarian passage. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the military's capture of the Gaza side of the Rafah crossing is an important step towards dismantling Hamas. Israel believes Rafah is where four Hamas battalions are stationed. Tuesday's capture of the crossing, which is one of the main channels for humanitarian aid to the territory, it puts Israel in full control of Gaza's borders for the first time since it withdrew troops in 2005. According to Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, Israel will continue its operations in the southern Gaza city of Rafah until Hamas are destroyed in the area or they hand over the Israeli hostages they still hold. Yesterday, I directed the IDF to enter the Rafah area, take the crossing and carry out its mission. This operation will continue until we eliminate Hamas in the Rafah area and the entire Gaza Strip or until the first hostage returns. We are willing to make compromises in order to bring back hostages, but if that option is removed, we will go on and deepen the operation. This will happen all over the Strip, in the south, in the center and in the north. We know that Hamas only responds to force. Well, Israel has brushed off urgent warnings from close allies. The White House says Israel must reopen Gaza's Rafah border crossing with Egypt. Now, the U.S., which is Israel's main military and diplomatic backer, has repeatedly said it opposes a major offensive in Rafah, where more than 1.2 million displaced Palestinians are living. The U.S. is voicing skepticism about Israel's military move into Rafah after Israel told them that the current operation is of limited scope, scale and duration. Now, despite assurances from Israel, according to a local hospital in Gaza City, an Israeli airstrike killed at least seven people and wounded several others in the city. And the strike was on an apartment in the devastated northern city, which killed seven members of the same family. While eyewitnesses are also reporting strikes elsewhere in the Strip, particularly around Rafah. On the other hand, in a bid to provide more humanitarian aid to the war-stricken Gaza, according to the Pentagon, the U.S. military has completed construction of its Gaza aid pier. But weather conditions mean it is currently unsafe to move the two-part facility into place. And for more on this, we're now being joined by Adrian Calamel, fellow at the Arabian Peninsula Institute, a scholar on terrorism and Middle Eastern affairs with a forthcoming book on Hezbollah. And well, he's joining us live from New York. Welcome to the show, sir. I want to first start by asking you that talks have resumed in Egypt after Netanyahu rejected Hamas's Gaza ceasefire proposal. Meanwhile, Netanyahu has further instructed his team, who is visiting Egypt for the proposed ceasefire deal, to be adamant on their demands. Meanwhile, Hamas says that the incursion in Rafah will undermine ceasefire talks in such a complex backdrop. Do you think that the two warring sides will finally be able to perhaps bridge the remaining gaps? 
Thank you for having me, first of all. And I do not believe uh, that they will be able to re uh, reach the remaining gaps. And here's why. It, it, it doesn't come down to Israel. Uh, for me, it comes down to Hamas will reject any deal, and they have rejected any deal, uh, every deal. The recent deal that was widely reported that uh, Israel rejected, Israel wasn't ever party to the talks. This was a deal that was crafted up in a back room, and then without Israel's consent, the language was changed on it and then floated across. And then Israel said, no, we've never agreed to this. We never even seen this document. So uh, let's start with that. And then we can move on to the ceasefire talks. Uh, when we talk about ceasefire or a permanent ceasefire, which is always in the Hamas language, they have been quite clear that they plan on carrying out these attacks in wave after wave after wave. Uh, regroup, retrain, reorganize. That's what ceasefire means. And then finally, I'll come back to the Rafah crossing closing. Uh, it's kind of rich that the U.S. government is putting pressure on the Israelis about how to finish off Hamas because the IDF is not going to make the same mistake that the American military made 20 years ago in Afghanistan when they decided to use Pakistan in a hammer and anvil approach. The reason why Israel has taken that crossing is to make sure that they can't escape. Hamas cannot escape. It's not to restrict humanitarian aid. There is enough humanitarian aid going into Rafa. It's to close off the rat lines where people can, can uh, move out, those four battalions. And that's why you see these very last ultimatums saying from Hamas that if any incursions happen, these continue to happen, then uh, they're going to kill the hostages. Uh, Mr. Gallim they're being Maximalistic. Yep. Yes. I wanted to just come in here, as you mentioned at the beginning, that you don't see the two sides closing off those gaps. Now, if there is no truce, there is no ceasefire, U.S. still feels hopeful. They are still positive about what may come out from the talks in Cairo. But as, uh, as of course, I can make out from what you feel that it's you don't see that coming across. What's next? I mean, are they just going to go through Rafa the way they've gone through the entire Gaza Strip at the moment because the understanding how Hamas regroups? What's next? Uh, well, they prosecuted this war very meticulously, very carefully. Uh, and they have moved across and moved regions and really tried to mitigate the damage that's been done. We can't trust the numbers that come out of the Gaza Ministry of Health or the Hamas Ministry of Health. Now it's in Rafa. Um, the United States, for me, they should really be backing this venture, um, uh, this, this um, last move to finish off this terrorist organization, take out their leaders, and to work towards a redevelopment plan. Because the Palestinians will never be safe under Hamas. Uh, they use them as human shields. So um, All right. I don't know where we go from here. Our State Department, Blinken, they, uh, we have a tendency to think we can talk our way out of any deal and make backroom deals. Um, but sometimes you just can't negotiate a deal that's going to work because one group's going to reject it every time. All right. Uh, that was Adrian Kalimel joining us and sharing all his insights on World DNA. Thank you so much for joining in, Mr. Kalimel. Thank you.